Hi everyone, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy, and today I just want to touch on the topic of nasal turbinate hypertrophy. We'll talk a little bit about what it is, and we'll also discuss some potential tools for mitigating symptoms. So I want to be very clear from the get-go that I am not an expert on nasal turbinate hypertrophy because I haven't really worked with it enough in a clinical setting. So Tara, why are you talking about this if you're not an expert? Well, it does relate to breathing, which you guys know I'm a big fan of, and also a lot of people in the community have been asking me about it, so I wanted to at least try to address it in some capacity. I also know that many of you are asking this question because you're seeking out ways to potentially avoid surgery, and I know how it feels to be desperately searching for tools to try out before committing to a surgical intervention. So I definitely can't make any promises here, but I thought we could brainstorm some ideas to at least get the needle moving in the right direction. I want to also say that everything I discussed today could also be useful for chronic sinus congestion, allergies, and certain asthmatic symptoms. You've got these bony structures inside your nasal cavity, which create a sort of labyrinthine pathway through which air can travel. They help to slow down the airflow so that there's more time for the air to be warmed, humidified, and purified before it travels down the respiratory tract. But sometimes, for some people, one of those turbinates can become inflamed or enlarged. And when that happens, that turbinate can actually partially or completely occlude the nostril and prevent air from being able to flow in and out of the nose. This can be incredibly frustrating and also quite stressful. So knowing that, I thought we could take some time to consider some options for helping to reduce some of that inflammation. This is definitely not going to be effective for everyone, and for some of you, it may not work at all. But some of you may have some amount of positive benefit by trying these strategies. So who knows? It could be worth a try. For those of you who have been suffering with this for a long time, I am sure you have already tried everything, but I still feel the need to state the obvious. First and foremost, you must remove any potentially offending irritants from your environment. If the body is expressing any type of inflammatory response, not just in the nose, but anywhere in the body, there is some reason, whether it's coming from your internal environment or your external environment. The body doesn't just respond for no reason. One of my favorite holistic practitioners always says, the body is under no obligation to make sense to you. Meaning just because you don't understand its response doesn't mean it's responding to nothing. There is a cause. So really working to minimize or eliminate any potential irritant in your environment that may be exacerbating your symptoms is going to be really important. Otherwise, honestly, everything else is just chasing symptoms. If we're not getting to the root cause, we're really just trying to mitigate the symptoms. Then of course, there are all manner of nasal irrigation tools and saline solutions for helping to reduce inflammation. You may have already tried some of these with little positive effect, but just in case, I'm including a link in the video description to some products that come highly recommended by one of my colleagues who works with this more in a clinical setting. And then any strategy that helps to cultivate nasal nitric oxide or any technique that really works to open the airways is going to potentially be very helpful. The theory being that the more you use your nose, the better it works, right? So since breathing is really more my specialty, I thought we could create a sort of breathing prescription for you to try out just to see if there's any positive impact at all. You may remember from previous videos that strong breath holds are powerful for opening up the nasal cavity and the airways. Part of the thinking there is that nasal nitric oxide is pooling during the breath hold to be breathed in after the breath hold. 
And nasal nitric oxide has a dilatory effect, helping to open up the nose and the airways, making it easier to breathe. Humming also allows for an exponential release of nasal nitric oxide, again allowing for this dilatory effect. And then lastly, depending on the severity of your blockage, you may need to start forcing yourself to breathe through your nose more often. The idea again being that the more you use your nose, the more you regain proper functioning. Meaning, if you had no other option than to breathe through that occluded nostril, and your body will absolutely force you to breathe no matter what, it has to get air in, could that somehow allow for the inflammation to start to reduce? If the use it or lose it theory holds true, then this could be an opportunity to start to incorporate some mouth taping into your daily life in order to help you shift back to nasal breathing. So what's the prescription to play around with? To avoid making this video too long, I'm simply going to link to other videos that I've already created for you guys that explain each of these exercises in detail. Number one, mini breath holds. You want to practice these according to your tolerance. So maybe practice for one to five minutes at a time, maybe five times per day. Or if this is an easy exercise for you, maybe 10 times per day. The more you practice this, hopefully the faster you start to regain some capacity to breathe through your nose. Number two, the nose unblocking exercise. Again, you have to practice this exercise according to your current tolerance. But if you tolerate this exercise well, I would say practice two to three sets of five repetitions throughout the day. And remember, you wanna put about 60 seconds of recovery time between each of those strong breath holds. Number three, humming. If you need a demo of the humming, then use the chapter descriptions in this video in order to get to the appropriate section of the video. Hum gently. See if you can find a pitch or a frequency that you really feel in your nasal cavity. Do not hum aggressively or hurt your throat while practicing this. Depending on your tolerance, you could start off humming about one to two minutes each day, and then slowly, progressively, over the next several weeks, you can work up to humming about 10 minutes per day, all at once or broken up throughout the day. And then number four, mouth taping. If your nose is very blocked, then mouth taping might feel very scary. I definitely recommend trying it out during the day, during waking consciousness. Keep the tape on for as many minutes as you can without getting anxious. And then again, slowly, week by week, try to build up that time. In general, you're working toward nasal breathing, quiet breathing, gentle breathing without a lot of turbulence, and slow breathing, piece by piece and bit by bit. Again, there is no simple solution with nasal turbinate hypertrophy, and all of you are going to experience a different level of severity with it. But I hope that this video offers a little bit of insight, and maybe even a little bit of hope, and inspires you to try some of these tools in order to help reduce some of your inflammation. If you feel this was helpful, or you have some personal experience with reducing your nasal inflammation and maybe have other suggestions to offer, then please drop those in the comments below so that everyone can benefit from your experience. I would also say that if you do decide to have surgery, these strategies that we spoke about today would also be really helpful for helping to retrain good nasal breathing post-surgery. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Also, please remember to check out my totally free Breath Basics six day challenge, my four week breath boot camp, my private online Be Light community, and my functional breathing PDF. And if you'd like to donate to my channel, I am always so incredibly grateful for your donations. You may do so by visiting my Buy Me a Coffee page. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.